by the Blue Mountains. Oh, nice. And uh, we can ask just because it's interesting. Yeah. I think having two vehicles. Hello, boys. Philip Rothfield here, Daily Telegraph. I'd just like to apologise for my comments last week. I was led to believe the entire Knights team and their supporting staff had their feet up in Kuta Bay, Indonesia. Now, I have nothing against the Indonesian people. They do a fantastic Nazi goring. My dear former wife, Estelle, still makes use of our marital timeshare in Kuta, but of course now she exclusively attends with beloved Australian comic icon Kim Gingell. Hey, hey, Kenty! Ken oh, that's right, Kenty's not here. He's locked away in a box of personal demons. Sorry, boys, I'm going to have to let you go. I can't find the bloody TV remote and the VCR's on the fritz. Love the show, boys. Hooroo! Welcome to the Joust. My name is Nagy, and I'm here once again with a member for the Standing Committee of Spoken English, Liam McNeil. Nagy, it's wonderful to be with you, as it always is, and it never isn't, and I'm very, very excited for this episode. Nagy, why am I so excited? I think I might be excited because we're about to, we're on the precipice of uh, the most greatest sporting event of all time. Now, there's three of them. But the first one gets you the most excited. It might be State of Origin, Liam. I've never precipiced so hard. In fact, this is the hardest I've ever precipiced. <laughs> precipiced. Pres precipiced. 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 Uh, it's, uh, Again, we are only on the Committee for Spoken English. We do not actually speak spoken English. No, 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 no. We're far from it. Liam, <laughs> we thought we had origin understood we thought we knew exactly what freddie was thinking with oh i selection. never thought that i was i was well aware that i have no idea what's happening in that man's brain at any point in time no. but i thought i knew the parameters naggy yeah. i thought i had a vague uh not understanding yeah, but a vague idea of, an acknowledgement an maybe. acknowledgement yeah. perhaps of, of what goes on in his mind but uh i was wrong we were hit with a surprise several surprises several surprises but that's the beauty of origin naggy yeah. surprises happen and we digest them as we must, for we, we must digest them. Digest yes. and digress. <laughs> and digress. We haven't digressed yet. We haven't digressed yet. That comes yes, later, Jason. It comes. <laughs> it is the Tavita Panga Jr. TBJ, as they like to call mm. it, because his name's quite long, so they shorten it to TBJ. Selected and also rumoured to be starting. Yes. Now, this is exciting. As a South Lions Jr. for one brief year, you know, I like to think that Tavita and I are kindred spirits. Of course. We both play with the same bit of mongrel mm. that we were raised with playing for the South Lions juniors. In fact, my year at South Lions, uh, we were under-17s, mm. Division 2. We had the team to win the comp, but uh, all the boys discovered that they prefer drinking and fighting to playing rugby league. Of course. And that is the ideal mindset for an Origin player. Yes. That is what Origin needs. Yeah. Drinking, fighting. Drinking, Fighting, guts, guts, determination, mongrel, all, all of those determination. Things. But I think now this may be the most out there selection of Brad Fittler's tenure so far as yeah. a New South Wales Blues coach. Um, but I'm here for it. If we think about a ceiling of a player, so mm. we've seen what they're doing in their best day, and we see what they're doing on their worst day, and you know it's in between. I think TBJ has got a ceiling that could get reached to the ceiling. But on his worst day, his ceiling, you know, as happened much to much your ceiling. ceiling, it rains a lot yeah. and the ceiling collapses. That's right. That's what yeah. happened to my ceiling. It's, it did. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, so it's going to be interesting. If they picked another player that we think, oh, okay, well, they're quite good, you know, Jordan McLean or mm. someone like that, you think, oh, well, I, I know what they do on their best day, but I know what they do on their worst day, and it's sort of a nice middle. Mm. But then TBJ, you think, well, this could be anything. There's no creamy middles for TBJ. No. So I love him starting, and, you know, on a similar vein... Hudson mm. Young from Canberra. Isn't that another man with some with a bit of dog in him? I like a it. A bit of dog in the fight. I think he's from Maitland. It was that explains he's, a lot. He's from the valley mm. and it was a player that we wish we were playing for our glorious Newcastle mm -hmm. Knights. But instead he's playing for our nation's capital. And uh, he, he's a kind of a player that really pulls pulls things out from nowhere. He does odd things on the footy field. And that's what Origin needs. You need odd things odd to happen. Things, yeah. You know, you need things that just can't be explained by rugby league science because we know that Brad Fittler works outside of rugby league science. Oh, he works yeah, in he, rugby league mysticism, rugby league in spirituality, ether. lots mm. of ether. Lots of ether. Lots of ethering. The zeitgeist. Yes, yeah. very zeitgeist. And I think these are the two most etherous selections I've ever seen from uh, from our dear Brad old Fittler. 
There's <laughs> Just fury. <laughs> we, we can, yeah, it's, it's some, as some people call him. They do. As some people Two call of our him. nation's finest uh, sports broadcasters of all time, I believe, came up with that. There is a, an element to, especially Hudson Young, but also for TPJ, that you really don't know you what clutch moment plays. And I think they both have it within them to really, you know, turn a game. Mm. They're not just going to roll through. Uh, they're going to try something different. I hope we'll see from both of them something they exciting. Could, they could also, either of them, and I wouldn't put this past them, turn the game in a bad way, much like Adrian Morley did in the 2000 uh, Ashes yeah. against Great Britain. If you haven't seen the clip, Jousters, look up Adrian Morley That's Ashes. He's trying to kill Robbie Kearns. He I did believe, off yeah. the very kickoff. He got sent off 12 yeah. seconds in. Mm. Kearns took the kickoff, steamrolled up. Adrian Morley just smacked him across the head with his forearm. Of I could see either TPJ or Hudson Young doing that. Would you but be, it's origin. That's a good thing. Would you be disappointed? I uh, wouldn't be disappointed if they didn't. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be really quite furious if they didn't. There was a player, Liam, that I really thought was going to make his origin debut this we year. We both had him in our predicted sides, well, in did. fact. Both in, both in different positions, I believe. Mm, Centre yeah. and wing. Yeah, but okay, Campbell. Not very smart. No, no, we have no idea what's going on. Campbell Graham. The most disinterested man I've ever seen <laughs> play rugby league. But he has so much aggression and he's rugged. And I feel like... In Look at or- that face. In origin. He looks like he's just... I don't know, dropped a fart, but it's smelling. You know when sometimes <laughs> He's waiting a- for the room to experience yeah, it. Yeah. But that's it. It's always your own sometimes smells worse to you. Sometimes, he's sniffing some- it and he's like, everyone else isn't getting this as badly as I am. <laughs> I'm the real I'm the one really suffering here. And I- that's what's happened. His non selection is a loud Angry, stinky fart, fart in, in the a room. room. Yeah, exactly right. I thought, with the <laughs> matter what he's done outside of Latrell Mitchell, I thought mm. he would have been a perfect uh, player to play wing uh, because he's you know he, he he's played wing for Australia before, mm-hmm. if we haven't forgotten. And of course, you know he just seems like a player that gets through a lot of work. Loves Arguably, his, the form centre in the competition as well. Lo- loves a bit of one-on-one contact. Mm. It's it, it. I thought it was perfect for Origin, but instead they've gone a different way, and that's okay because that's Freddie's job. It's Freddie's job. But the way they've gone, and we'll see it here in the photo now. Who's that? T- Tall, skinny boy, mm. Tom Trebojevic. Now Turbo, this is, they call him. I've heard a couple of commentators, uh, journalists, uh, members of the rugby league media, alternative and mainstream. Look at the size of him compared to Brad Fittler. He's an enormous man. He's a very tall man. But a lot of people are saying that uh, New South Wales have flipped the script okay. and they've done what Queensland have done for so long. They've picked a player who wasn't necessarily informed, but has been there and done the job before. Incumbency and loyalty, we discussed last week, it's have always been so important to Queensland. And the selection of Tom Draboyevich. Of course. The return yeah, of, of Josh, Josh Adokar. Yeah. Uh, Tyson Frizzell. Of course. These all feel like Queensland selections. Mm. They've got the job done before. We know what they can offer. We know what they do offer. But they haven't been playing well. And that's not something New South Wales have done much in the past. Now, I was happy to leave Tom Travojevic out of the side because mm. I'm an idiot. Uh, Likewise. But, but when I looked at uh, Tom Travojevic, and, and the series that he's played, he's played in three Origin mm-hmm. series. Guess what's happened to every one of those Origin series? One. We've won them. And he's been phenomenal. Absolutely. Remember his first series, he was playing on the wing. wing. And he down was, in Melbourne. Yep. Yeah, down in Melbourne. He was unstoppable. Ran for 200 plus metres, I think. And so every series, he's at, he has a bit of a kinship with Latrell Mitchell mm. because every time he plays, Latrell plays, or vice versa, I don't know who's originating this, uh, but they both play together mm. and they win Origin Series. I, and I, win well. And I can't wait. I, it's a bit of a fear They in win and they win well. One other selection that I would like to address, yeah. the selection of James Tedesco. Now, there are certain people out in the rugby league world who are saying, oh, Tedesco must be dropped. Bring in Dylan Edwards. Bring in Lockie Miller. Bring in anyone not named James Tedesco. Mm. That's the dumbest rugby league take I think I've ever heard in my life. First of all, the man's the incumbent. Second, he's the incumbent captain. captain. Yeah. Third, he's arguably been New South Wales' best player of the last five years yeah. and maybe top three or top five in New South Wales' state of origin history. Has he ever had and a people, bad game? Has never. He, never. I've never seen him play less than a 9.5. In fact, uh, a couple of years ago... Uh, Nick Campton, one of the finest rugby league journalists, host of Boom Rookies, gave him an 11 out of 10. 11? In the Daily Telegraph, he, he did. Clicked it up to 11. He did, like, the film that I've not seen. <laughs> but apparently, 11's a good number to click it up 11's to. 11's a good number yeah. to click it up. It's but louder than 10. The, imagine the idiocy, thinking that you could have a New South Wales state of origin rugby league team without James Tedesco at the back with the C on his jersey. I know you touched on it before, Liam. I know you touched on it before, but to work your way back into the side mm. after three years of being out of the side, our very own Tyson Frizzell. The discussion around Tyson Frizzell, I think, has been quiet. It's been a bit of a... a I bit of take an... my glasses off there. I wasn't sure if Tyson Frizzell's in focus. <laughs> no, he's not quite in focus, but he's still there. The Frizzell chat was more of a murmur that kind of came out of nowhere, but I think yeah. if you have your young Tyros... Yeah. 
in Hudson Young, near yep. TBJ. Yeah. They need an old Tyro. Stalwart. Maybe. Stalwart. Ooh, someone yeah. who's, you know, built of rock, runs to hurt, got mm. a bit of mongrel. And I think that Tyson Frizzell is a very wise selection because he can corral these young men. He yeah. can take them by the scruff. And say, listen here, you fella. Listen here, fella. Yeah. Do what I do, not as I say. Yeah. Because he's too nice. He wouldn't say anything mean. He's a very nice fella. Yeah. He's, but he, he, as, as Andrew Jones would obviously say, oh, talking about his selections, he would say he picks himself. Which is a very, very quick way to do, describe, uh, you know, the reasons for selecting or he selected himself there. But he, the kind of form that we see from Tyson Frizzell in the last, you know, three to four games mm. has been something of a, a playing of like a much younger man. He's mm. thrown age out the window. He's 30 something, 31, 32. Who knows? He's picked up he some now. headwear this week. We won't tell you which one it is, but uh, there, yeah. there'll be some headwear yeah. around Tyson later on in the show. Absolutely. And I think he's, he's, he's worked his way back into the side with, and he wouldn't think, oh, I don't know if he can do it. He's done it before. Mm. We all remember the chase down at the dang gay guy. Didn't stop the try but everyone was like wow he's quick. still a wonderful origin he's player fast. and i think the other one we have to discuss and this was one that uh, you and i did not even think did mm. not comprehend would happen no they picked nico mm. now i think one of the reasons they picked nico is because as we've seen and we'll cover this a bit more in the news that abby corasau has been in tremendous form with the tigers wonderful. absolutely tremendous 66 and i think 18. oh yes yes we'll discuss that more trust yeah, me that's yeah. very exciting um but i think the thing about Happy Coruscant was if you watched the Tigers earlier in the season, which most of you probably wouldn't have. No. Uh, they, those games did not rate very highly no. in the Nielsen ratings, I think they call them. Of course. But he was playing very good football. It's just the Tigers didn't know what to do around him. He'd do his silliness in around the ruck. He'd muck about for a bit, do whatever it is he Twiddle does. and fiddle around. And they'd all just stand around looking at him because they didn't know what to do. Yeah. And now you're seeing the Tigers in triumph yeah it's like watching a magician yes. you don't know what to do you just stand there and go oh but now they do know what to do when they're winning all of a sudden but nico hines is the big one now i love this yeah i think nico's a wonderful boy of course dally m winner he's a dally m winner he's yeah. a pillar of the nrl yeah on and off the field just a gorgeous boy of course. gorgeous gorgeous boy gorgeous, and i coast, think yeah. central coast boy yes uh terrigal i believe uh, one of them one, yeah, of, one of them yeah. Yeah. one of the w's probably why 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 watervale why why so, There's too many of them. There's too many. But now, where do you think they're going to play Nico Hines? It's a good question. I don't know. Hopefully they have a plan for him and they're not yeah. going to relegate him to that that terrible back on the bench that they've done so many times with the likes of Josh Morris and Dylan Walker mm. and uh, James, James, Bur- James Bure. James Bure, Knights legend. And they give all of them seven minutes at the end of the game and the game's basically decided. And they Sif say, I did it with as well. How can they do I would love, Nagy, I would love... Mm. To see Nico come on, come on as that fourth playmaker. Of course. Like uh, Queensland did for years and years where they'd bring Kronk on off the bench. Of course, yeah. They'd throw him in there and say, all right, we've got four playmakers now. A little bit Better with DCE as well. DCE as well. Yeah, as well. Yeah, they'd yeah, play, yeah. play him off the bench. So, again, I hope, as you mentioned, that he just doesn't get a token... Here you go. Four son. minutes. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Go get your taste. I, I, I want like him to that. fill a role. I, I mm. want to see him in the first half. And to see the way he plays football. He's so stylish. Yeah. He's smooth. Yeah. Someone recently uh, compared him to Wally Lewis. Oh, yeah. In the way that he does things that look slow, but they're so fast. Yeah. And we're better to, you know, play slow but look fast, fast. than the State baptism of, of fire that is state of origin. The baptism. Of course. But it's... we need to look at the other side of the coin now. Yeah, as we all know, a coin has two sides. Yeah. The other at side of that coin two. Yeah. has two heads. And it's from Queensland. Yes. Now, the leader of Queensland at the moment, William Slater, mm-hmm. uh, seems to have a, a little bee in his bonnet about the Newcastle Knights. And he's made and, the, si- and the city in general. The city in general. Yeah. He hates them. And it's and it's and then, an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and he's got his hand around the wrong way. He's twisted it right around. That's how much he hates Newcastle. He's holding it so much. He disjointed his entire <laughs> he, forearm his entire just one. so he could flip Newcastle off from the back. How dare he? There's yeah. two selections that he's left. And he said, no, you're cut. You're gone. Sorry about your service. Hey, the guy that won us the, the entire series last mm. year, the man of the match for game three, Kalen Ponga. See you later. And dang guy, guy, you can go with him. Now, I'm hearing some uh, some echoes from the past of yeah. Queensland oh, loyalty. Pick and stick. Loyalty, yeah. Queensland, get over. That's how they all talk. Yeah, yeah that's how they all talk. <laughs> murmurs. <laughs> murmurs. <laughs> He's speaking murmurs with no syllables. Yeah. So, you know, this is where Billy Slater has taken the opposite. Yeah. He's dropped some established stars, yeah. you know, some men who have delivered to, so many times for Queensland. To bring in some new fancy boys. Fancy boys. Yeah, yeah. Tangalai one. and uh, Tang- Tangalungi. Oh, sorry. Tangalungi. Tangalungi. Oh, no, he played last year. Yeah, they played a bit. And Hammersau yeah. for now. But, yeah. but it's like, no. 
But the most important one to me, Nagy, the big one that's standing up there right in the number one jersey right off the top, replacing our own Caelan Ponga, Reese Walsh. The pretty boy. The sexy baby. Yeah, of course. The whiz. The whiz. Now, he's been in great form, yes, don't get me wrong, but he's yeah. still just a baby. Yeah. He's, well, he's, and again, another baptism of fire for him. Mm. I hopefully, hopefully someone takes his head off. Maybe it's going to be TPJ. I think it'll be TPJ. If not, Hudson Young. Hudson, one of the two. But besides that, who gives a shit about the rest of those assholes in Maroon? Mm, That's right. always been New South Wales' thing. We worried about what Queensland would do and we tried to stop it. We don't do that anymore. They, we should, s- they should worry, worry about, about us. And, us. Tr- and they will suit what they want to do to what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. first game, not in Queensland, not in New South Wales. It's in the third state. Mm. Adelaide, when was the last time, Adelaide? Nagy, that Adelaide. new... Adelaide, yeah, it's in Adelaide. Rattleade, I think yeah, it's some yeah. hippies the, call it. The when was the last time, Nagy, that New South Wales had two State of Origin games? 2016. And when is the next time New South Wales is going to get two State of Origin games? I don't games? think it's ever going to happen again. Well, thank you, Volandi. You are ruining one of Rugby League's great heartlands. Yeah, New this. South Wales, the home of Rugby League, mm. the place where Rugby League was established in 1908 at the Ship Inn in Sydney, yeah. will not see two Origin games in the foreseeable future. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you, Mister? Don't worry, Jousters. We'll get him on the phone. We've got a whole laundry list of things, Jousters. We're going to get him on the phone about, and this is the one we deserve. Yeah. Nay, we have earned. earned. No, we deserve yeah. two <laughs> games of state of origin football. Bring it back to South Sydney. Wales. No, send it to Newcastle. Remember, there was that course, brief period in time when Newcastle was touted as a as an option. Yeah. You fit was... thirty three thousand in there at surge capacity. So it'd be stunning. Stunning, and you'd have to get Caelan Pong and Dango go back in the Queensland side just to give us a little bit of something, something, something to swear at. Yeah. We like swearing at our own. In <laughs> Liam, it's very important that we cover all things rugby league, not just the Newcastle, not, not just state of origin. But before we do, if we weren't happening to be out of town at the, uh, on Wednesday night for state of origin, where would you be? Oh, you have to be the Hamilton Station Hotel. It's a wonderful pub. Liam, it's a pub. I don't know how much you pay for a beer anymore on a regular at a regular. A pub, forty-five to 45, fifty dollars. One for, of those for two. A midi you of go mid strength. You go in there. You em- can light. You empty your wallet. You upside down it. You, you you shake it and you say, "Take all my money, and I'm going to take a little bit of enjoyment." And it's all just tax money going to the government. Of course, of course, the government. But what I wanted is a true blue Newcastle mm-hmm. pub, right in the center of Newcastle. That says, "Hey guys." Is basically on us. We're just charging ten dollars for a schooner. No, not for, for a pint. No limb for an entire jug. A full jug of Tui's new or Tui's old for ten dollars. And do you, you a little bit peckish. I'm always a bit peckish. Got a couple maybe. of dollars in your pocket. Oh, I got a couple of dollars in you my sky. Got a couple of wings. Oh, I love a chicken wing. You got oh. an air fryer? No, but you ever done chicken wings in an air fryer. It's not amazing. A, not a day goes by without someone asking me, "Will I have an air fryer?" I don't That's because ca- I ask you every day. <laughs> I don't have the counter space. <laughs> well, someone's birthday is coming up. Oh. Air fryers are too expensive. Sorry, Nagy, you won't be getting one from me. <laughs> but it's it, it's going to be a great night. I'll there. message Morty. She yeah. might get you one. She might, that's my mother. Mm. The uh, well, it's going to be a great night at the Hamilton mm. Station Hotel. Ten dollar, ten dollar jokes at two is new and two is old. Two is old all game long. It'd be a great time to get out there, enjoy, be amongst the people mm. of Newcastle, be amongst the lovely blues, and also then shout at the people, the one or two Queenslanders <laughs> that were there, uh, and then and then push them out the door onto the train tracks with uh, great ferocity. <laughs> with great ferocity at, a, at high velocity. <laughs> Uh, Liam, if only we were allowed assault weapons in Australia. If only, if only we don't need. We've got two arms and a pair of train tracks. Liam, it's and it's, certain of us have a solid forehead that we're going to refer back to later in the news. Of course, yeah. you're referring to me. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. The headbutt. Because oh, well, we'll come to right, the headbutt. Yeah. I thought you were talking about my large forehead. Uh, Liam, it's perfectly proportioned. It's perfectly proportioned. Liam, it's uh, time for that special time where we cover mm. everything NRL, and it's time for the news. We'll do it one episode. We will not stop bubbling. Sorry, I um, really, the, uh, really dribbly there. <laughs> well, it can happen with the bubblers. <laughs> you know, really it's, dribbly. it's easy to happen now, Liam. Do you uh, think they'll use bubblers in school anymore? What with the threat of COVID? COVID yeah. Did your school have the one chilled bubbler? No. Why, where, where, where did you go? Well, at St. Pius in Adamstown. Yeah. It's a great school. Very good school. Right, and yeah. It was a school of. Chilled bubblers. Yeah. Oh, no, there was one. There was all regular bubblers all over the place, but uh-huh. there was one chilled bubbler. Mm. You'd line up for about 15 minutes to get it. It was ice cold. It was fantastic. But boy, the politics of the line at the chiller. To the chilled bubbler. They were, it, you know, it rivals anything you'd see in Parliament House. Yeah, well, man, some yeah. of us. Uh, Camilla Parker Bowles over here had his little chilled bubbler. Hey, that's the queen you're yeah. talking about, mate. <laughs> the queen of our Commonwealth. <laughs> 
<laughs> First port of call for the uh, Governor General. I'm quietly confident Buckingham Palace is filled with chill bubblers. Uh, but, uh, did That's we how they get the children from Prince Andrew. We just had tap. Uh, <laughs> tap, please. Single tap. When you're at a restaurant and then it's like sparkling tap, you're like, tap, please. <laughs> but don't say it too loudly. Uh, <laughs> in the news, Liam, our very own 5 8 Ooh. Caelan Ponga. Adam O'Brien's pulling something pretty revolutionary here. Now, we, so. we've come up with a, a bit of a term mm. here at the Joust for what Adam O'Brien's doing. It's pretty uh, pretty groundbreaking. It's the reverse Lockyer. The reverse Lockyer. Taking a well-established, well-known star 5'8 yeah. yeah. and, and putting, putting him to fullback. Full How will this work? I don't know. I don't know. What the, what, Do you ha- think the boy knows what happens when you put a number one on his back? I don't. Th- well, it's going to be interesting to see. Mm. It's going to be interesting to see whether this star five eight of ours mm. can actually go back to fullback and manage. It's a big adjustment to make. Huge, very big adjustment to make. To- you know, as a five eight, he's so adept at you know taking the ball two passes out on the left hand side and slicing through the defence. Of course. How will he adjust to playing fullback where he has to take the ball two passes wide on the left and slide through the defence? I don't know how he's going to do it. I can't see it happening. I just don't see how it'll work. Under the high ball, I don't know if he can catch. I've never seen him catch. <laughs> it's gonna, it, I've never seen him catch a ball. It's going to be very hard to see. The reverse the reverse Lockyer. Never been tried. Never been tried. You couldn't make it up. You could not make it up. It sounds like a sort of a more of a fetish move that you might see in a late night brothel. The old reverse the old Lockyer. Reverse Lockyer yeah. when the lights are going to be off and you've got to be sort extra of... extra $25, please be, and thank you. You've got to be facing north and have both your hands in the air. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a special str- strange thing that happened on the weekend, Liam. We like to think that there's a, uh, you know, a certain, uh, by this point of the season, you know, the good teams uh, float to the top mm. and the shit teams sink to the bottom. Mm. Uh, and we always thought that the Tigers this year, the Tigers in turmoil, Liam, mm. were... were Got to be one of those shit teams at the bottom. And they were playing, you know, a less uh, impressive side than the Cowboys. Mm. But then they decided to put on a 66 to 18 thumping. Now, we discussed this before the show. We wondered, we, we, we laid the boot in at the yeah. start of the year to the Tigers. We laid the boot in. We, we hurled insults at them. Mm. You know, we slandered them. We put out libel, libel against yeah. them, slander and several, libel. Several cases against yeah. them. And now they're three from four. Yeah. I think it's time to flip the, flip the, flip <coughs> the switch. Flip the switch and yeah. say, look. We've been there, Tigers, to the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. And to see them come up off the bottom of the barrel is just fantastic. And Luke Brooks, he's a much maligned character. Of course. I think it's safe to say. Maybe the most hated player in the NRL media's history, perhaps. Mm. Mm. Now, one thing I would say to Luke Brooks is, between his first game and his 200th, why didn't he just play that well in the other 198 games? That's where he's let himself down mm. and he's let his team down. However, he's, he's let his country down. He's let his country He's worked it out, though. And he's let Queen Camilla Parker Bowles down. He's let down the royal family. <laughs> He's let it all down. The, the chill bubbler, he's let that down. <laughs> but it's good to see the Tigers turning it around, especially because that means the Dragons, despite winning a game, still dropped into last position. But it was on the back of a Newcastle Knights legend that the Tigers built their win. Star for Toa. Star for Toa. I think Star got uh, two tries, perhaps three. He looked amazing. Five line breaks. He looked amazing. 45 to 50 tackle bus. I'll I don't say it again. entirely, but... He looked amazing. He looked amazing. Everything, everything was coming up toe, as they say. Mm, yes. Uh, that is old, old, <laughs> old Newcastle old saying. saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this, uh, the other one that excites me, and this is what the Tigers have been looking for since James Tedesco left. Yes. Dream Buller. Of course. Oh, this fella. Yeah. This fella, he's come from nowhere. Where'd he come from? He came from uh, nowhere. Guess, yeah. <laughs> Leichhardt or Campbelltown. Yeah. I assume he was in one of those local government areas. One of those two but very similar local government areas that they made a club to, to cover both of those. They yeah. really aren't that closely located. Yeah, now, I don't, I don't know. know much about Sydney. I don't care to know much about Sydney, yeah. and I won't learn much about Sydney. No, 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 but so they don't seem close together. They're not close geographically. They're not no. close culturally. Socio-politically, socio-economically, They're all demographically. Separate. Yeah, yeah. Except- There's nothing linking the two except Jareem Buller. Jareem Buller. <laughs> what an exciting rugby league player. A David Clemmer, another Knights legend. Yeah, Isn't it great David. to see former Knights juniors and legends succeeding elsewhere? TPJ, Hudson Young, Stafford Tor, David, David Clemmer. Would have been would you would have been surprised to see David Clemmer back on the origin side? I wouldn't have been surprised at all. Uh, Freddie seems to hate him. I think so. He marked his card several years ago. He said, David, I don't like you. I don't no. like your personality. I don't, I don't like, like who you are or what you do, so I'm never picking you again. Away, David. Away. Which he was always the heart of the mongrel yeah. of the New South Wales pack. So yeah, I, I would have been happy to see Clemmer back there. Uh 
Speaking of oh, the players that were sort of on the fringe of selection, Liam, of mm. New South Wales, but then decided to uh, you know, forego their selection of New South Wales and say, actually, I'm, I'm from England now, which was a surprise to all of us. See, now, this is where we should have known that Victor's brain damage had truly you know, re- gone past a mm. reparable level. Of course, yeah. And of course, he's got himself caught up in the NRL uh, 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 soap opera. Again, as a rugby league journalist who we won't name and for legal reasons, uh, referred to it as Victor Radley has avoided his fourth sin bin of the year. However, by headbutting Blake Laurie. Yes. Yeah. Now, when was the last time you saw a good uh, Glasgow kiss? I don't know. It's been a while since a good headbutt's been thrown mm. there because they should be very, very illegal. They should be. Uh, look, it's interesting with uh, the the. Uh, if you suspend a player, you do something wrong, and you're suspended. They mm. say, they say, go away, take some time out of the game, and think about what you've done. It's basically mm. the naughty corner of the NRL, uh, and that, you you have that a few times in a season. You mm. get suspended, you get suspended, and you'd think you'd learn from your mistakes. Well, see, now there's a word you're using that I don't think applies to Victor Radley that much. Learn, think, ah. oh, learn as well. Yeah, those are two things I don't think he's very good at. And the funny thing is, you know, for the last couple of years, every time he gets suspended, you hear all these. Uh, talking heads, of course. the NRL mainstream media, mm, the, the Murdoch rags, rags. The rags. They say, well, that's just how he plays. That's just how he plays the game, you know? Yeah. So we'll illegally. Tell, we'll te- yeah. Yeah, yeah, illegally yeah. teach him to play the game differently. But yeah. that's just how he is. We'll tell him to not be that, and this won't continue happening. If you'll flick your eyes to the screen, Jousters, you're going to see very blatant evidence yeah. of a forehead to the chin. Yes. And not only that, a supplementary throat grab. Throw in a choke. Yeah, hey, he's That's going the say. MacGruber, going the turkey. Yeah. It's <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. The throat, it's, the throat rip. Well, he was moments away from ripping Zach Lomax's throat completely yeah. out. If anything, that's probably two sin binable offences, which would have brought his total to five. Yeah, and then also, he, but he wasn't sin bin for either of them. He sort of, uh, I, can't, I was going to say, he sort of cancelled out his sin binning by saying, stop sin binning me, and I'm just going to do whatever I liked. And what? then they, they did it, they stopped sin binning him, they're going to they're gonna suspend him anyway. I believe it's three weeks. Liam, we're going to touch on the Newcastle Knights game against the Sharks <sighs> in the second half. Mm. I know I can hear your disappointment in the yeah. voice, but please stick around, Jousters, because it's going to be excellent, and the second half of the Joust will be right back. Welcome back to the second half of the Joust. Now, Liam, after that ex- magnificent win against the Titans, mm. that record-breaking win against the Titans, mm. we'll hope we can repeat that against the Sharks, but it wasn't to be. Much like most of our hopes and dreams, Nagy, it was dashed upon the rocks at Coffs Harbour. <laughs> <laughs> That's like- where our dreams go to die, famously. <laughs> Coffs Harbour. They do, right at the beach off the jetty there. You jump off the jetty, the tide's a bit lower than you thought. I was hoping that, you know, despite us being separated on the ladder by several places, mm. I was hoping the Indigenous jersey, as well as, you know, playing at a, in a country stadium, uh, that we, we might have been able to, to do something unusual. Uh, but we did something quite usual. Which was uh, losing. Which was losing against... Which is a, a shame that that's something quite usual to us Knights fans. It really is. Well, it's know. against the team like the Sharks, who are playing mm. incredibly well. With the best the light- attacking team in the NRL, in fact. If you look at the numbers. Yeah. If you look at the numbers. Which we shall. Which we shall. Yeah. It's the best way to gauge a thing, looking we, at the numbers. We There was a call that potentially that the team should have all gone to Bali. I did hear, a, uh, I think it was a voicemail that was left for us. Did you listen to that one? I think I just something skipped about, past it. Something about Bali. I mean, we'll, have to, yeah. we'll have to look back on that one. Yeah. Uh, it might be that, that uh, yeah, annoying piece of shit from the... Uh, <laughs> from, from, that calls us most weeks. Uh, but it was... But we, <laughs> Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rupert Murdoch himself. Yeah. But we uh, we should have gone to Bali because they've got to fix all their problems mm. as they did with Bradman Best. You know, well, they like to say that uh, Coffs Harbour is the Bali of the Mid-North Coast. They say that for so years. many bogans. They've always said that. <laughs> it's a place that you go to and you think, no, I'm not going to run into anyone here. And you see everyone you know. Everyone. It's a yeah. damn shame. And for our boys to not perform mm. in, a, as you mentioned, a yeah. country area, a regional area, yeah. which Newcastle is considered. Yeah. Just breaks my heart. It was. It, like, it wasn't. It wasn't the, the result that we wanted, mm. uh, and it wasn't the way we wanted to play. And you know, this year I think if anything, even the games haven't played well. We've managed to score some points, but mm. we really struggled to score points in this one. Twenty and point loss, twenty six to six, Liam. And I think it'd be safe to say that it was the Will Kennedy show. Yeah, it yeah. was the Will Kennedy show. He is just. Will Kennedy? Oh, he's some kind of a rugby league player. Will Kennedy? Yes, he will. Yes, he will <laughs> indeed. Will he? Won't he? Yes, he will, Kennedy. But the real one for me, Nagy, yeah. who drove the knife in, twisted the knife, took the nails, hammered the lid on the coffin, All this. was Connor Tracy. Connor Tracy. He's a young yeah. boy. Yeah, you're a fan he's of an Connor exciting Tracy. Boy. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. But what he did to Dane Gagai verged on the disrespectful. It did, yeah. He said, Dane... 
I know you're going to get picked for Origin next week. Yeah. I'm going to stop that happening. Gonna... So maybe Connor Tracy's the best New South Wales boy. It very well could be. It, could it be. very well could be. Do you think he got a phone call from uh, one Frederick Fittler and he said, look, I don't want gags in this team. Yeah. You just go out and you give him a bath. That's your You mission. give him a bath, you take him out, you dry him off, put his nappy on, put him to bed. <laughs> Turn on the turn yeah. on the uh, the mobile above the bed. Be his daddy. Put on the put on the the you know the baby monitor. Yeah. Then just go into the next room and get on the piss. All of those things. Do you think that's what Fred Fitler said to Connor Tracy? Those exact words. Those exact words. <laughs> <laughs> or something of that nature. Or something around those. Around words. those words. It was a loose translation. But I think Nagy, if I'm to be honest, we were probably only uh, we were probably lucky. Lucky, in fact, say. to yeah. only lose by twenty Christian points. Yes, because could have been forty because of all the errors. You see. So many errors. So many errors. From Mm. both teams, but more so from the Sharks. Mm. The Sharks managed 16 or so errors. Mm. Threw away a lot of, left a lot of points out there, as they say. Which is worrying. It is concerning. It's concerning for the Knights. You could say maybe the Newcastle Knights forced those errors. I Uh, would not say that. I (laughs) I definitely would not say that. uh, I think if anyone was to accuse the Newcastle Knights of forcing those errors, you'd need to get your bloody rugby league IQ checked. Well, that's just looking at the glass half full, which uh, hopefully we can do when looking at a beloved Newcastle Knights. But there was a concern early on in the game, Liam. Our very own Caelan Ponga mm. uh, went out there very early in the game, as is tradition, went down <laughs> for a, a, a head uh, impact assessment. Is that what the Head injury are? assessment. Injury yes, assessment. I should know. I've had enough of them. You have. Uh, but yeah, wasn't that just... Aren't you just getting sick of it? Well, it's I concerning. Stop tackling with his chin. Well, he well he, he it's went the out. weakest part of his body. Yeah, stop leading. He's with just it. hurling it into people. Not like that, Nathan Cleary. It's the strongest part of Nathan yeah. Cleary's body. The chin is Caelan Ponga the anti Cleary. If they had children, <laughs> would they have normal chins? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Nathan it's Cleary, a, chin made of granite. Yeah, Caelan Ponga. Chin, chin made of mush, uh, marshmallows. <laughs> marshmallows. I was going to say glass, yeah. but I prefer marshmallows. Yeah, soft. because he hasn't broken it. Yet. No, no, no. But would a marshmallow chin be better because it would absorb the blow? It depends on the blow. Mm, yeah. Or depends on the marshmallow. Oh, they're really true. You a pink or white guy? Uh, probably white. Okay. I always like I the think. pink ones. They're very good. You get the really big ones. Yeah, we recently used them for s'mores. You guys yeah. ever had s'mores? I don't know. Well, oh, you take you know the, the digestive biscuits? Yeah. With chocolate, uh-huh. and you get a marshmallow. Yeah. You put it in the fire. Okay. You take it out of the fire. And then smush it, it with down. the biscuit. Yeah. It's a biscuit and marshmallow burger. Take a bite. Refer yourself to a doctor because you now have diabetes. And third degree burns because <laughs> hot marshmallow straight out of the fires. Uh, anyway, so Jousters, if you uh, have any opinions on what uh, food... That, that will <laughs> burn Pong, you. Yeah, well, I was thinking more <laughs> what food Caelan Ponga's jaw is made of. Please uh, send us a message. Let us know some of the foods that burn you. I've had a burn on the roof of my mouth for about a week, and it's really it's really been annoying. Well, they don't go away, because no. I'm the kind of idiot who will get a burner on his mouth eating a hot pizza, and then tongue two it. days later, eat a way too hot pizza I think it's you just tongue it and it won't let it heal. Also that, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> How's that burn going? You just oh, flame it again. you reminded me of my ex-wife. <laughs> just tongue it and you won't ever feel it. <laughs> This is the Joust Up Late, ladies and gentlemen. Glad you're with us. I'm glad you're with us for our X-rated show. But we've got some headwear to discuss, Naggy. Yeah. Where do we begin with the headwear? I think I'll uh, I'll lead off if you please, wouldn't mind, Naggy. I'm going to start with uh, an addition of a headwear to someone's head. I'm going to go, I think Daniel Safiti had a good game. Hats I think off. he had a great game. An addition to a subtraction of Hats off, addition by subtraction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, ran for, uh, I think, 147 metres. Something like that. We were yeah. a bit concerned that mm. the uh, that the Sharks' middles would be a bit weaker than we thought. I didn't do my research. Turns out Braden Hamlin, who LA was playing. Uh, and I think Daniel Safiti was one of the only Knights middle forwards to really make any kind of an impact, impact get any yeah. kind of go forward going. Yeah. And I thought on that performance, maybe... Freddie might call him, but he didn't. He didn't. But, he didn't. Uh, but uh, against uh, Joust's advice. But my own hats off this mm. week uh, was a player that Fred did call, which mm. was uh, the continuing a uh, positive form of our very own Tyson Frizzell the Frizz. There was a couple of things I saw from Frizz that gave real credence to the rumour that he was going to get picked. Kick chase. Kick chase. Fantastic. He's like lightning. Hard there. hits on the kick chase. Fantastic. And very, very good. Man made of boulders. As much as it disappoints us to say, but when you take a hat off to a player, mm. sometimes you've got to reverse that and put the hat back on and say, yeah. not really this week, it was your week. It's a zero-sum game. The hat's on, hat's off at the mm. jazz. It's a zero-sum zero game. Sum. Each has to be balanced with the other. And this breaks my heart. This breaks my heart that I have to give our hats back on sort of to boy. a good, honest Group 2 boy playing up where Group 2 is in the... 
the heartland yeah. of Australian rugby league. Lockie Miller. Lockie, I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't want to do it. I now, really didn't. Now, he's been uh, relegated to the bench this mm. week, uh, I would say just on form, mm-hmm. uh, with our very own Callum Ponga moving from 5 8. He's known, new position. New position. Brand new position. Spanking. Groundbreaking. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Back to fullback. And, and Lockie Miller, but we think An oh, well, experiment, I think we'll call it. I think yeah. most people thought Lockie Miller would move to the bench. Mm. But he said he's. Uh, sorry, moved. <laughs> a lot of people would think that he would be moved to the bench, but he has. I thought Adam O'Brien was just going to rent him a room at the Sawtell Hotel upstairs and say, mate, Sawtell are playing next week and uh, yeah. in round, uh, I think it's round seven Group up there. two, Group enjoy. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Just run out for the Panthers. Have a run around. What Go back th- to the pub after. What do you think he's going to do off the bench? What do you think? Well, they, now you had an interesting theory because I don't know. I genuinely don't know how to use him off the bench. Well, he's, I just said because he's from, you know, seven sort of mm. background. He's played a lot of sevens. And in that, basically, you, at any given stage, you're going to play in the middle, mm. tackle in the middle, make a lot of pass uh, off the ground. Pass off the ground. If you are uh, filling his halfback. Does that feel like he's going to hook? I don't uh, know. Imagine him ripping around through the markers there. Are they going to unleash Causing havoc in the middle. I don't know. Maybe if they yeah. reduce his workload, mm. maybe he will really find his feet. Because it feels like he's been on a bit of a downward trajectory the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Four, maybe four. that has to do with the return of Caelan Ponga. He's not been given the chance to shine as Caelan took a bit away. I think he might tacky. be onto something. Yeah, 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 yeah. It could be. So it'd be interesting to see yeah. if with Caelan a fullback and him more around the ruck, could we find the best from Lockie Miller again? Because the thing I liked about Lockie Miller at fullback, and bear with me for a moment if you will now. I'll bear. Entertain me with uh, your thoughts on my drivel. I shall. The way that I saw Lockie Miller freeing up Caelan Ponga in attack. Yeah. In naval warfare, there's a, 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 a concept called the fleet in being. Settle Basically, adjusts. what the fleet yeah. in being yeah. is that your naval fleet is so powerful that all it has to do to tie up the enemy's naval resources is remain in the port. Of course. So as long as your fleet's in the port, yeah. they can't send their resources elsewhere to attack. Makes sense. And so that's what I thought Lockie Miller was going to play that role, where they say, mm. oh, we got to hang on to Lockie. Mm. Let's, we, 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 we can't focus on Caelan. Because we got Lockie over there. Yes. And so I thought Lockie Miller was going to be our own, um, you know, great British Navy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That would, you know. Be the maritime, uh, you know. The, the maritime. The, the, maritime, the, the yeah. maritime solution that we And then draw in the German high seas fleet yeah. Yeah. into Jutland. Classic. And then bam, you get Caelan Ponga around the horn. Yeah. The horn of Africa. The horn of Africa. Didn't happen though. Didn't happen. Didn't no. quite happen. We got all the way to the horn. Couldn't get around. I tried to explain that to Adam O'Brien, but his knowledge of naval warfare and doctrine is quite frankly yeah. embarrassing yeah. for an NRL coach. <laughs> it frankly. really is, quite frankly. <laughs> Stop dropping the wood, Nagy. Stop dropping the wood. But anyway, that's how I envisioned Lockie Miller's play at fullback, and it just didn't seem to happen that way. Um, but who's your next headwear uh, return? Return of the headwear goes to Dane Gagai. Now, mm. he probably had a, a position there in the Queensland side, and it was, uh, as you mentioned, Connor Tracy. Mm. Really just tore him to pieces. Yeah, isn't that funny how Queensland uh, pick and stick? Yeah, look at Queensland it. Queensland loyalty. I would say Dane stick. Gagai, 22 origins, and, and, and really he... Hasn't played a bad one either. Well, he always plays well. He always mm. plays well on the wing, though. The, the, it seems like he was more destined for a centre position, and he didn't get it. But so a bit of an upsetting there for Dane Gagai. Look, I hope to see him uh, firing at all cylinders mm. again against uh, uh, the Manly Seagulls. Offering Seagulls. a rebuttal. The Offering robust. a rebuttal to Billy Slater and said, "Look, Billy, you are not a smart man, buddy. No, you, you know, You've you made a mistake, Newcastle, at your own detriment. You made an enemy here, Billy. <laughs> you named names, you Billy. Named names, you named Billy. other players ahead of me. You <laughs> named names, Liam. You love meat." Yes. <laughs> you love pastry. Yes. You love pastry encompassing meats. What about the gravy? The gravy in I there as well. I love the gravy. Anyway, this week's uh, try of the week, pie of the week. I had a real, uh, real tough time combing through the Newcastle tries uh, from the Cronulla game to pick which one <laughs> yeah, I which, think yeah. would compare to the pie that I had today. The agony um, of choice. Yeah. The agony of choice, <laughs> yes. But I think I found one that suited it. Now, I don't know if you, uh, Joust, has spotted this. But the Knights did score a try Hello. through Kalen Ponga, the marshmallow jaw man, mm. uh, where Kalen gets to the left, yeah. throws a ball to Bradman Best, Bradman Best steps back in, offload back in. Yeah. And the pie that I had today was really enjoyable. It was a great pie. It was a Jack Horner's Bakery uh, in Argentine, 24 hours a day open, six days a week. How do they do it? It was a great pie. Yeah. It was a very good pie. But it was surrounded by nonsense because yes. it's in Argentine. Of course. So I'm sitting there in the car park. I'm enjoying this great pie, mm. but everything around it is shit. Shit. And mm. I think that's a great way to sum up the uh, the Caelan Ponga try. It was a great play. It was some beautiful football. Yeah. Everything else around it was very bad. The rest of the Newcastle Knights team was Argentine. They were Argentine. 
bit shit. <laughs> very, very <laughs> shit. Very, very Decent pub. Yeah. Got a BMX track there. Well, you need one out in towns well, like that because otherwise you've got nothing else to do. You ride your bike through the day, you go to the pub at night. Well, it hurts me to go past the BMX track and look at it because my beautiful wife, Brittany, I love very much. Yeah. She won't let me buy a BMX bike. I thought you were going to say she's some sort of BMX bandit. No, I want to be and she <laughs> won't let me. Oh, too dangerous? Well, that was the other reason. Growing up in Sawtell, I enjoyed my life so much because we had the BMX track on the way to school. Pop yeah. in on the way to school, pop in on the way home. Some wives don't let... Lockie uh, probably used to pop in there before school as of well. Of course, you know? naturally. Some wives don't let husbands buy motorbikes, mm. but, the, but your your wife won't let you buy uh, a, a, a man-powered bike. A BMX bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the thing. My, my, midlife, cri- yeah. my midlife crisis is a much more budget-friendly <laughs> midlife crisis. <laughs> I just want a new free agent, that's all. I'm not looking at a Harley. No, no, I'm not looking at a Harley. I want to find a small elf 20-inch BMX with a gyro. Yeah, of course. As as all... No stunt pegs. I'm a dirt rider. I don't (laughs) ride street, okay? This is... Like an onion, Liam. Uh, Anyway, yeah. (laughs) So, anyway. Great pie in the middle of... A lot of badness and mediocrity, yeah. much like the try that we saw Caleb Did they charge for sauce? I'm just interested. Oh, uh, yeah, 30 cents. 30 cents, that's all right. That's but all again, in this, in, this in, this, economy, this economy, in this economy, you can't be giving it away. You can't be giving it away. Uh, Tomatoes ain't free. Sunday, the 28th of May, mm. uh, we've got a game against our old rivals, no, the Manly yes. Seagulls. A long and storied rivalry. Been a bit one sided since 1997, though. Well, surprisingly, we're at home. We're at home, Liam. We're, we're, we're at our very own stadium, McDonald Jones mm. Stadium, which is, you know, Lambton Road, Broad Meadow. And it's. Uh, this and is Kamal. It is Kamal. Hello, Kamal. That's, <laughs> only people that listen to 2HD will understand that reference. Now, uh, there's. It, it's, it's a manly side that's missing. A host of players, an entire mm. family of players. Yeah, a literal genetic a literal f- pool, a literal gene pool is missing from their team. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be. I've got a picture of the said gene pool here. That the picture, two big ones, and the third one. That is to scale. Not pictured. <laughs> the fourth Trebovich brother, who, according to Wikipedia, is, is not involved, involved in the NRL. <laughs> <laughs> That's the extent of his Wikipedia uh, exposure. Is that he is not involved in the NRL. He's an accountant. I believe he is an accountant. I hope. <laughs> There is a anyone who's not playing the NRL is an accountant. That's Jake all there is. They're the only two professions in the world. Jake NRL Jerobe players and accountants. Accounts. So they're one or the other. Yeah. You gotta be good with numbers if you're not good with the ball. Now if if Jake Javoyevich uh, ruled himself out of uh, state of origin contention. Because I think we have a in, uh, picture up here of his injury. Yeah, to, here he is. He's torn his, he's he's torn torn his, his calf. calf. <laughs> torn his calf. <laughs> torn his calf. He was giving it a feed and he overfilled it. This is <laughs> and it just exploded. This is where we've come to, Justin. <laughs> this, is where, this is where we've arrived. You've come to this point. <laughs> and I'm glad you're still here. But there's been a big move, Liam. We're not going to see our very own 5'8", Caelan Ponger at 5'8". Mm. We're going to see... Tyson responsibly. Now I love this move. Yeah. I think Tyson responsibly and Jackson Hastings were a very good halves combination. Yeah, they combined well together. Jackson Hastings had enough of the uh, organizational skills yeah. that you need from halfback, and just let, just let Tyson be Tyson. Yeah. You know, run around being a mongrel, yelling at people, mm. grinding people's jaws into the ground with his elbows. Yeah, just doing upsetting people, upsetting people, not the fans, insulting people. It, no, if anything, ingratiating himself to the fans, upsetting the other the other players. Yeah. It's a play you hate to play against, and we're going to throw him out there for eighty minutes, and I can't wait. I can't wait. I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> but then does Lockie Miller come on and Gamble come off, or Hastings come off and Miller come on? Or do we see a Lockie Miller yeah. at five eight? It's going to be interesting to see. Do we see Lockie Miller at hook? I don't know. No, Liam, it's, it's an a, odd selection, Mr. Adam. It's Mr. Adam OB. Too many questions and too many questions, and it's our job to answer them. But, but we, got, we can't. But we're also it'd be it'd be rude of us if we didn't uh, include the the family feud mm. of uh, the Battle of the Brothers, uh, Jake, and also who hosted the Australian Tom, what's his family ba- feud? What's his that? Jack and Cooper. Jack and Jake. Why is Jake? <laughs> We've been talking about so got many brothers on the brain. Yeah, I know they've got the wrong brothers on the brain. There's twelve Travoyeviches and there's only two Johnses, right? So Who hosted Family Feud. Uh, Grand Denya. It was Grand Denya, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. shortest but most lively man on television. He won uh, the Golden uh, Logie, but then the show had been cancelled already. And it? then he crashed his car. Did he cancel crash his car? Yeah, quite dangerously too. Oh, he was yeah. severely injured. Grand oh, I'm sorry to hear about the Grant. Yeah. Uh, but the Battle of the Brothers uh, between the two <laughs> Johnses, well. Johnses, mm. 
uh, which we'll see. Joey's uh, nephews. Joey's nephews. Yeah, yeah. We'll see Cooper Johns and uh, Jack Johns mm. uh, come up against each other. They look not a lick at like each other. Like uh, <laughs> they look like they could be distant, distant relatives. I've heard rumors about Kurt Gidley and uh, <laughs> the lineage stemming from him. Of course, where he gets yeah. his height from. Yeah. We didn't make that first comment. We're just simply quoting uh, uh, Andrew Johns. Um, <laughs> but of course, we've moved our five eighth back to fullback. We've got a centers. The team basically remains the same. Uh, we've what the red mist uh, mm-hmm. has moved back to the bench. Uh, it wasn't a great performance from him against the Sharks. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, better from the bench uh, as well. Adam as Elliott moving into lock starting. Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, Adam Elliott. Yeah, it's Sorry, good to Mr. Say. Boyle. Mr. Boyle. Yeah, of course. Adam. Yeah, yeah. He's failed to keep Millie with us, you bastard. <laughs> uh, but hopefully, he comes out and play. He had a decent game against the Sharks, mm. as far as his stats are concerned. So hopefully, he can he can continue on that type of form. Mm. Manly are missing Trevojevic and Cherry Evans and Trevojevic and Trevojevic and Cherry <laughs> Evans. But what about the battle of the uh, tall, fast men on the wing? I want to see a sprint the, between yeah. Jason Saab. Newcastle's Ferrari and yeah. Manly's Saab 900. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, the, uh, and it was, yeah, it would be interesting to see. I want to see a bit of open field. Mm. As long as uh, Young wins that race, they're not, they're, yes. if, if they, they don't win, I don't ever see it ever again. Oh, no, I'll scrub it from my memory. A lot of people will say Saab, surely, but I think uh, Young's uh, interesting. Well, Saab fast. runs as softly as if uh, someone was thrusting a pillow at him. Yeah. Whereas Dom Young runs and he knocks you over. Yeah, like Saab, Saab runs and Saab gets Saab runs over. like that lizard that runs across water. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, it's just like he's just <laughs> touching. Water dragon? Water dragon. Just, no, the water dragon's much bigger. They're I think. beefy. They're beefy. Yeah, yeah. The, the, one like that just, the one that just sort of tiptoes across the water. The I've not heard of this, but... Uh, but you know, like, it just looks like Can we get the boffins on that? Can we get the lizard <laughs> that runs over water. The green basilisk lizard. <gasps> of course. Of course. Like in Harry Potter, the basilisk. But there was a snake. Yeah. Yeah. We've got you, oh, there it is. There, yeah, there it we is. Go. There it is. We'll, That's, get, uh, we'll get it up for the U.S. We've got, got a picture of Jason Saab, I think, we're about to see on the slide. <laughs> exact photo uh, of Jason there Saab. There he is. There. Jason Saab streaking down the wing at Brookvale Oval. Here he comes. He comes up there. <laughs> thank you for... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to the Buffins. <laughs> this is where we've arrived, Jess. Again, we've arrived here. The calf, and now that's Jason Sub. It does sort of look like him. Score uh, prediction, <laughs> Maggie. Uh, does he have a tail? Uh, score prediction, look, move on I, think the Newcastle not sh- I think the Newcastle Knights should be able to win this. Mm. Should be able to win this comfortably. I'm predicting a 26 to 12. Okay. Mm. I'm going to go 18 14. I'm Newcastle expecting Knights. a big game from uh, Caelan Pong and his brand spanking new position at fullback. And I think he's going to really understand. I don't understand. know how he's going to try and find himself in that position. <laughs> An unfamiliar <laughs> spot. <laughs> unfamiliar. I know Nathan Brown floated the idea when he was starring at 5'8 for Nathan Brown. Yeah, of course. In that, <laughs> yeah. in that tremendous run of playing the number six. <laughs> and of course, we, we barely touched on the fact that Adam O'Brien swore that he's not going to put his 5'8 his, uh, back to fullback. That didn't last long, did it? I forgot about that. Might I'm be around 12 or 13 or whatever it is. But but it's but it also like it's only about the fourth game that Kalen's yeah. played. Well, it's Origin. No one cares about the NRL for the next couple of months. So he no can do what he wants quietly, and no one's really going to know. No one's looking. It's the dark yeah. room at the party. No one knows what's in there. What's happening in there? No one knows. Nightcrawlers. <laughs> Speaking of uh, dark rooms, where no one knows what's going on. It's Davy Zach Liam. We don't have a sack sound effect, but there we'll, we'll use I keep meaning to bring on. the iPad with the soundboard. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Jouses. I'll have that ready next week. Question: Levon Rush. Hello, Levon. Hello, Levon. Uh, Levon wants to know which club will swoop on Lockie Miller now. He's in the New South Wales Cup side. Levon, I already covered this. Mm. He's going back to the Sawtell Panthers. Match mm. payments. Group free two. pie. Free pie and a Coke on the day. Mm. You know, at the caravan out on the hill. What I used day? to love as well in the, at uh, Rex Hardacre Oval. So you had... You know, the clubhouse on one side, the fans that all stand there. Yeah. You'd have the the, uh, the the scoreboard fans that all stand there. Yeah. But then you had the other side, which was reserved for the cars. So you'd pull in, you yeah. know, you'd back a ute up right to the sideline. Yeah. You'd have a couple of slabs in the back. You'd sit in the ute. You'd sit in the ute. All oh, right. And then people would score. It's all horns going off. Uh, uh, it was so great. someone has to sit in the horn seat yes. like, and face the wrong direction. No, sometimes they just <laughs> drive in the front and just sit there. Like watching the football ready like that, which seems really uncomfortable. Yeah. But they're like, you know. They're ready for the horn. I've got my car. Yeah. I'm sitting in it anyway. I yeah. may as well be watching the footy. So I think, Levon, we're actually going to see uh, Lockie Miller leave the NRL structure entirely yeah. to go bush. Group two. Mm. Group two. Thanks Great you. competition. Thank you, Levon. By the way. <laughs> Next question, Justin Guion. Is AOB head coach material mm. if he's claiming that the boys weren't enjoying their footy on the weekend? Ooh, interesting question. It's a bit meta. It's oh, a bit, yeah. You know, yeah. Is, are they enjoying? This. Do they have to enjoy it? It's their job. 
I don't enjoy my job. And when I don't enjoy my job, I do it terribly. But I, I actually do like my job. So. That's, right. That's true. That's great. But if it's if it's a question of want, I think is really what they're asking. Mm. Is it, is it, is, but it, does AOB, is he responsible for how much the boys are enjoying it? Well, that's Should, it. Is it not his job to foster the environment that would make the boys enjoy the footy? But what does he need to do to make them enjoy it? Have Maybe. a bit of fun at training. McDonald's party afterwards. Yep. Do the hokey pokey a couple of times. Turn yourself around. Turn yourself around. Hope they turn the form around. To Get say some that. girls in, a bit of spin the bottle. Oh, know. right. You think it's, it's, all, it's all it's sexual. Just have a big <laughs> sleepover party. No, just a sleepover party. Pass the parcel. If know, they have a sleepover stuff. party and the lights go out, maybe they can do the reverse lock here in the back room. Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if they wish to be arrested. You need at least seven people to make the reverse lock here possible. Uh, <laughs> Next question. Apologies for not answering it at all, Justin. <laughs> Billy Bennett. Billy Bennett, sticking on the theme of Lachlan Miller, will mm. dropping their best player in New South Wales Cup improve the Knights this weekend against Manly? I think a lot of people jumped out of the, the conclusion that, mm. that Lockie Miller would be dropped. No, he would just be playing less, less minutes in mm. a role that we don't know. Well, I think they're talking about Newcastle's new best player in New South Wales Cup, Dan Alcofalao. Of course. And I believe scored a try on the weekend. Uh, another again. try, yeah. Three tries in two or three games. Impressive. One of the two. Yeah, they're very impressive. So, yeah, Billy, we're sorry that uh, everyone kind of got ahead of themselves with the questions mm. about uh, Lockie Miller. He'll still yeah. be yeah, Lucky Miller. He'll, He'll still do. work his way back. Yeah. Final question. Glenn Urane. Glenn asks, what are your thoughts on the one-man strip of the ball? I like this question. This is good. Mm. It's one-man strip of the ball that starts as a two- or three-man tackle. Yeah. Cost the Knights at a critical time on the weekend. Glenn doesn't think the rule was brought in for a two- or three-on-one only for tacklers to drop off suddenly, allowing one remaining tackler to take it. Would you like to see it as purely one-on-one -on -one from the get-go? I think so. And now, I'm intrigued that you have to say that, Nagy, because I... Just kind of like the rule. Okay. Because for, for too long in rugby league, mm. players have been given the benefit of the doubt for bad ball security. Yes. Bad ball security. Yeah. You out, it's out there. It's flopping yeah. around. It's up you there. You need to secure the pill. Yeah. The pill is everything. Mm. And if you are put in a position where even if having two players drop off you, you have the ball stolen from you, you're not doing your job well enough. Yeah. So I think, Glenn, that... Uh, I am okay with that rule. Yeah. It does add a bit of grey because mm. it's like if you, you either got your hands on the ball or you don't. And if you've got your hands on the ball when they're trying to play it, it's mm. a penalty. Yeah. But if you've got your hands on the ball and you try to steal it, there's only one of you. It's all right. And if there's one thing the NRL loves and the NRL media and the NRL commentators and the NRL referees is like they love shades of grey oh, interpretation. Of grey. Oh, Until yeah. a few years later, we're like, we don't want shades of grey. We want black and white. Some people, And then a few years after that, we won't want black and white. We want interpretation. Asian. Much like the obstruction rule that has been ebbing and flowing for years and years because we want consistency and then we want inconsistency and consistency in the inconsistency and inconsistency in the consistency. Some people like to watch a game with set rules. <laughs> And they like to know the rules when they're watching the game. Others like a hey, it's a new game, new rules. Let's just let's just all dive in together and see where we come out after eighty minutes. Some people just like a vibe. <laughs> it's the vibe. It's like just the... just get a steed and send yeah. thirty blokes around it and just see what happens. See what happens. Just let it vibe. Pretty sure that's how rugby league was created in the mm. first place. It was. <laughs> no, it was created because of the working class. Yeah. The working class of couldn't afford to take injury time when they were playing rugby union. Finally. And they said, this isn't good enough. We're not those fancy rugby union boys who can take a month off because we did our ACL. Definitely not fancy. I've got to go work in the mines tomorrow. Tomorrow. I've got a 40-hour shift on Tuesday in the mines with my pickaxe. Knees And bugging. I've thrown my AC joint. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't do it. Couldn't do couldn't it. Couldn't do it. It's a good... Working class game. Rugby league was born out of class struggle. It's a simple man. It's a simple game. We're simple fellas. Thank you for joining us for another week of the Joust. If you like us, please like us on SoundCloud, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. Is that what that is? <laughs> <laughs> That's Instagram. So I uh, don't watch all of the, the, the social pipes, but you do. And thank you very much for joining us for another week. Uh, please join us next week for our very own Origin special, as well as we'll be covering the Knights Manly game. Uh, and make sure you head down to the Hamlet Station Hotel for all the excitement for game one. We and how much is a jug of beer now? Ten dollars. Ten Australian dollars. You can't beat that. Cannot beat it, even if you tried. Thanks for joining us for this week, Justice. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>